Okay, so I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for being here, particularly to everyone who has hopped onto the live call. Uh, my name is Sharon Mark Taggart, along with um, the wonderful Sally Cathcart here. We are the co-founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers. And today we are very, very excited to have the wonderful Jodie, uh, who is a member of the community of the Curious Piano Teachers, but she is also the, now Sally, I'm going to, I know you have it written down in terms of her official she title, is, which she we've been discussing. She is an executive director of Cadenza, yeah, which is the Cadenza practice app. And Sharon and I also have to declare an interest because we're on the steering committee and have been for several years now, haven't we? Um, and we were very, very excited to be invited to be on this steering com committee uh, by, by Rena, Professor Rena. I'm never quite sure how to say her name, Judy. Eupetus. Eupetus, thank you very Eupetus. much. Eupetus. Eupetus. And this whole Cadenza practice app is based on research it's based on mm. um, a collaboration um, of, of all sorts of different um, institutions, including universities, and I know uh, the Canadian Conservatoire or something like that. So we are just delighted um, to be part of the steering group, and it's been fantastic to see it develop over the last three years or so. Sharon? Yeah, I think it's been what... what Sally and I, as um, we're obviously piano teachers, um, we head up the Curious Piano Teachers, but also our background as music education researchers. And I think what's really so exciting about this, um, about Cadenza, is the fact that it is researched. Um, Professor um, McPherson, again, who is, I remember when I was doing um, some of my research, I was, I was absolutely loving his stuff and he's been involved in this project. Rena Eupetus, um, who is the, is the um, director on this, is, um, I remember reading one of her books, um, one of the, where it was, this too is music, and it was one of my top five reads when I was a master's student. So I just remember being so uh, humbled and so thrilled to be able to connect with Rena. So um, this yeah. is something that is, is just super high quality stuff. Um, so this webinar today is all about seven ways that the Cadenza Practice app is going to help support your online piano teaching. Something that we are really getting to grips with just at super fast speed. I know teachers have been thinking about this, but what's been happening um, in, in communities around the world, we've just, we've been forced to go online. So um, I think really without further ado, Sally, I'm gonna just I'm let you say Jody. any final words and then it's gonna be over to Jodie. Yeah. So Jody's going to talk us through um, getting set up and all the, all the pros and cons of using Cadenza. If you've got questions along the way, just pop them into that box, into the chat box, all panelists and attendees. And Jody will be stopping from time to time and we will ask the questions at that point. In the meantime, do feel free to chat to each other if you can see a question that you know the answer to. Okay, which is what normally happens. So Jody, over to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Sally and Sharon, for having me. I'm so excited to be invited and to be able to share this in real time, troubleshoot for people in real time, and then really focus on why Cadenza is such a great uh, tool to use in your studio. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, what I've done, I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to walk through the process of what it looks like to be a new teacher. So I have already put this new teacher in, but this teacher hasn't added any students. I know that that can sometimes be a little bit of a sticking point when teachers first arrive on this page. They aren't sure what to do next. So you can either click your Add Students button here, or you can find it here. And there are two different scenarios for adding students. One way may be that the student has already registered themselves as a student, so they're already in there, or maybe they connected to another teacher at one point. So if that student is already there, I'll put my pretend student in here, then the student has been invited, you can see right here. Okay, the other way is if the student is brand new, so um, I'll just make up a name here, XYZ, and you put their email in here, and it's going to send that student 
um, you can send the student the link. However, I'm going to suggest that you just tell the student to enter, go to the login page, enter this email, and enter the temporary password. That seems to be the most seamless process for students and teachers to get started. So just send them a message yourself, ask them to go to the login page, and try this. The other option is to give them this link, okay? And if the student doesn't get the link and 24 hours has passed, it will say activation link expired, but it's fine. Just go to the login page, put in the email, do the password, and it will, and it will work. Okay, so um, that's sort of the process of getting your students added. And then I'm going to log out and re-log in as my true self because I'm not only the executive director of Cadenza, my real face is as a piano teacher. I have a studio of uh, 44 students and um, that's my, my passion. I just love teaching, love my students. And as this pops up, you'll see my favorite part of the day, honestly. I can see all of my students right away. I can see what they've done. You can see all of these students practiced last evening. Have several pages of them. So this would be the second day. So I can get a real time quick snapshot of, of what students are doing right here on my dashboard. So my first, um, my first step of how Cadenza can, can make your online teaching easier or how Cadenza can support your studio was just exactly this knowledge, having knowledge, having real time data about your students. So I'm going to actually use Evelyn here as an example, who's a great little student who just um, was just invited to play at our music festival highlights concert. She's uh, an enthusiastic student who used to be a little bit unfocused, very strong, very determined, kind of wanted to do her own thing all of the time. <laughs> so I find that if I can go in and get a snapshot of what she's doing, I can help maybe direct her in the, the way that she might put her focus in some different areas. And her growth over this last, from September till now, has been amazing. So let's just pop in here to her first lesson. <clears throat> so I copied this over yesterday for her. I duplicated a lesson by going into here, clicking duplicate and then duplicating the, all of the tasks that I had in the previous week for her. I won't do that right now because she's been working away at this week. I can see that, as usual, my Miss Evie has focused on her repertoire, but hasn't necessarily focused on her technique <laughs> or sight reading. So I might send her a quick little message in here. Sorry for my silence. I think my um, internet is getting a little overwhelmed. <laughs> Are you having any troubles with these new keys? Question mark. So the next time she opens that up, she's just going to have just a little reminder of, of what she needs, okay? It's just a, oh, okay. Ms. Jody is, is looking and seeing how I'm doing and checking out for my, uh, my well-being. And I'll just pop back out to my dashboard here. Um, I can also go to a previous lesson of a student. So let me go to, um, down here to Emma. So I get knowledge of Emma's lessons. I might look at, Going to look over here on this page. I can do a little drop down and get a snapshot of her week. So throughout the week, now this is a high, you know, the student is working at a at a hour level nine and succeeding 
really making progress. She really only practiced 14 minutes on her scale assignment for the whole week, but is seeing progress. So the students often go in and go, oh, this doesn't take me an hour to do just my scale work. I can, I can do this, I can be efficient, I can get this done. Now, might I recommend that she puts a little more time into it? Yes, but it's motivating for the students to see that it, it's not, the time commitment is not overwhelming. This is a very, very busy, high achieving student and she needs to know that she can get her tasks done. These are all of her, so I can see she spent the most time on uh, Kingston Mills Locks, which makes sense because it's her favorite piece. So that's how I get a nice quick snapshot of a, of a good week. And another bit of knowledge that I find um, has occurred is when, I, when the students upload videos, I get a chance to actually hear the quality of their instrument, the tuning, I get to see their technique, their bench height. So I'm absorbing all of this knowledge that I didn't have previously about their home practicing environment, which is huge. And I, I think, um, you know, I just had a situation about uh, just a few months ago where a student uploaded a video and I was excited to see it. I had a look and then I went, oh, <laughs> the piano was so out of tune. And the student has such a great ear. So I was able to get a message to, to the parents and say, wow, what a wonderful uh, video. Now here is the <laughs> piano tuner's <laughs> information. Um, and you can take care of that. So I wouldn't have known that information had that student not uploaded videos for me within, within Cadenza. So that's sort of my first, uh, my first step. Um, of, of how it can help you is just the information gathering. It's new information that we didn't have it before, that we didn't have before. I think that's, that's just fascinating, Jodie. I've, I've learned something doing that, you know, which is the, about the drop down for each section, because I'd never clicked on that. So I didn't know that you could get all that detailed information. And I think that's, again, that's so fascinating as a teacher that you can begin to realize if, if, as your student is, they're actually doing the work, but they're doing it on 14 minutes, you know, that's really interesting. It's, you know? it's very fascinating. Yeah, it's, I, it, I noticed, I learned things about my students that I never, I never yeah. knew in the past. Yeah. 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 For sure. and, and I think this idea of getting feedback about their setup as well, you know, I think for everybody who's now teaching online, we're going to be noticing that, you know, we're going to be far more aware of what the setup is, whether they're sitting at the right height and stuff like that. I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do about getting the piano tuned if it's out of tune at the moment that would be my only thought but yeah. um yeah. we were talking about that actually this morning yes um we had a a, a member um a couple of breakout rooms for members to come and chat and that's what we were saying you know about how mm. being online we're actually hearing our students pianos and realizing who some of them are um just a quick question one that as you were going through and putting in the email, I've a, a quick question. So let's say you have, when you're, when you're setting up students, um, and let's say you have two or three students from the one family. Can you use the same email? You can use Thank you for email. that question. So you can I register. I have that right here in my FAQs. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I get that question a lot. So, each student profile is connected to a specific email. So it's not possible to use the same email more than once for a student. So we recommend that you go in and get a free Gmail account or an iCloud account, something extra. And I just answered a question. Someone asked me if you should use a student's email or a parent's email. I always encourage a parent email because of the safety of the student and security and age um, depending on the age of the student, of course, um, if they're if they're 16 and under, I I recommend that you always go through okay. the parent when okay. dealing with things uh, this way. Yeah. So, so definitely, it's kind of like 
Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So like, for example, let's say you have two kids from the one family um, and for one, you would use, say, the mother's email and the other, the father's email, but you will definitely need two separate different emails. You will. Okay. Yeah, I've had that very scenario this week, actually, because I'd had the elder sibling was already using Cadenza, the younger two families, the younger sibling not yet on it, because I bring them on to Cadenza usually at a certain point, but I've, I've brought them all forward because it's just such an easier platform. And yes, I discovered, oh, they can't share the same email. So now we've got mum and dad using their emails and presumably if there was a third member of the family they'd have to create another email if they um it's not exactly yeah. hard so yes lorraine so i can just say we, we have a comment here from lorraine she has got four siblings to teach in the one four family emails and three in another you know even now, even just Jenny, how one. Much do they need? sorry could you ask yeah. again sure. i was just wondering so let's say um <clears throat> So for, for siblings, can, are they going to need the email a lot or is it really just for the initial registration? Like, is it possible, for example, for that family to, let's say the parents have just one email address and they'll have to set up another three emails. Do you need to regularly be using email or is it kind of more or less just for the initial setup? Exactly. That's exactly right, Sharon. Yeah. Yes, it's just... So, so that, it's not that it has to be an email that you're going into and checking every day. No, you've got it. Correct. Yes. It's just to link the account to a true email address. And that's what, uh, that's what makes your account go live. Yes. <clears throat> there are, that's pardon me, <clears throat> there are workarounds. I know someone mentioned in the Facebook page that they've just been adding siblings into one account. You, you can do that. However, you're not going to get true data. So you're not going to yeah. be able to really truly see um, each student. And so uh, it's not recommended. There are, as with everything, there are workarounds, but um, I would really suggest that you put each, each student with a separate email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got, a, got a couple of questions. Um, one person said that I've just mentioned bringing my students on a certain point. And she said, is there a recommended age or level? And I, I don't think there really is. I mean, that was just the way that I tended to like to do it because I, I like to stage, have different practice kind of approaches at different ages. But I think, you know, I've got beginners on it now. So I, I don't believe there is a, a certain age or level. Jody, your thoughts? I totally agree. I, I used to go from about age seven and up. But now that we are in this situation, and actually before yeah. this situation, yeah. if yeah. I have a really involved parent, and I wouldn't be really teaching anyone who was five or six, if I didn't have a really involved yeah. parent, then um, then I use it. Uh, I use it younger. So, yeah, I have all of my students on there. Okay. Actually, except for one, except for one, who was just a beginner in September. But we've been, we had been discussing it, and then this whole break happened. I don't put them on in the first lesson. So I, I don't add that. I don't add that brand new family. It's too overwhelming um, in the beginning. And we're not, I'm not currently in a situation where I'm going to be taking on any brand new students over the next. Um, uh, in fact, we've had that very question from Caroline about those of, you know, um, would we recommend waiting a few weeks before introducing this tool? Um, I, I think I would wait at least one week. Um, obviously, you know, the situation is very different now. So if you are starting a beginner, then that's a very different situation, full stop, isn't it? Um, so, you know, but like teaching most beginners, just, just take your time with it and, and establish a few basic routines and then maybe bring on Cadenza, I think. Agreed. We've also we've also got a question from Chris Marsh, but I think this is probably leading us into the next bit, which is to do with what the student sees and how the student interacts with what they see in their account. Mm -hmm. um, are we coming um, to that? I would like to recommend to all teachers who are just getting started with this that you create a fake student for yourself. And that way you can play back and forth between what the teacher mm -hmm. view looks like yeah. and yeah. what the student view looks like and what their experience is going to be like. So mm -hmm. I'll pop up a student right now. I have my, my good old practicing Peter. Yeah. 
We've got other questions and we will come back to those in a few minutes. So Alwyn, we'll come back to yours about um, child yeah. protection and, and yes. <laughs> Um, I, I can um, okay so um, okay. that's a good idea Jeremy using your mum as a guinea pig yeah use somebody else uh, mm -hmm. I, I have my own student yeah. Sally Cathcart Cadenza site just so the page so I can just double check what it looks like because it is quite informative to see what happens I just wanted to bring your attention to the this spot first. So this is the notification no, we can't area for a student. At the moment. We can't see at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. We haven't shared anything. Apologies. Mm -hmm. That's okay. There we go. There we are. That so is this perfect. is the notification yeah. area that the student will see when a teacher has invited them if they've already registered themselves. Okay. So they'll click accept. And then that will go and connect them to the new teacher. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so if I'm a student, really don't see all of these extra teachers normally. Um, I have done a lot of uh, back and forth playing with other teachers so that they can see what's happening. So here, mm -hmm. I would go to my latest lesson. And I would see that my teacher has assigned me two tasks. I click the arrow, which will take me to the first task. So here it is, and I'm going to click Start Practice. And I'll get all organized, get my books ready, get whatever I need ready, and here it is. So the timer starts automatically for the student. It's going to run. And just so you know, teachers, it won't record the time if it's under one minute. So if you have itty bitties who are working on something that takes them a few seconds or takes them 50 seconds, it's actually a great way to encourage the students to see, see if you can get that to go over one minute. It's really mm -hmm. motivating for mm -hmm. them to watch it mm -hmm. go over the one minute. The description that you put for your student of, of different things you'd like them to know about will be here. And then the checklist that you can make for the student would be here. So you would check. Oh, I should also mention the bubbles. The targets are how many days, how many times at the piano you would like them to do their practicing. So I've asked this student to do five different days, or if, if they can't do it in a day, they might have to do a double practice in one day to get those five bubbles filled in. And, um, then these are a more finite list, so you can narrow down the checklist for the student. They can click once they've done that. They can click once they've done that. And this is very motivating here. The kids can be grumpy. <laughs> this is one of my ways. This is actually what I wrote down for um, my fifth way that Cadenza can really uh, can really change your studio or help your studio. The students feel so empowered to be able to go, I am not feeling great about this one. They can, they actually feel totally empower, empowered to send me a message and say, this is not going well. <laughs> then they click notify teacher and practice. And you'll see up here in their little, um, bubbles, as soon as their practice saves for them, it's going to fill in the bubble right here. And there's their lesson. It shows they made a comment, it shows they notified the teacher, and it shows that, that they're not so happy. I usually try to really honor the student's comment to me. So <clears throat> I know it probably sounds like I have, you know, 44 comments coming in from students every day. I don't. I maybe get five from the group um, every other day. It's not a, it's not a really big time, uh, time user. But if I do notice that I have notifications from students, I'll go in and reassure them, it's okay, stick with our plan and see how you feel tomorrow. And that student will get my comment back to them underneath here. Okay? 
just while I'm in here, I know I had a, a question the other day that what if the timer, what if they wanted to adjust the timer? Maybe they forgot to click start practice or um, which happens often, or maybe they clicked end and uh, didn't mean to. They can click on their lesson and these three dots and go edit timer and they can add in the fix. Okay. That's, that's probably good for there right now. Um, I can also bring your attention to the media annotator right here, which is the big one. You know, this is, this is the big one. This is what makes us unique. Uh, it also helps build, it, it does what the, um, what was intended in the first place for Cadenza, which is to make students more aware of their own practicing, foster self-regulation, and I'm just going to, to come back to my face here for a moment. Um, I have found that this is the biggest change in my, in my studio, is this empowerment of students. They start to make their own fixes. They start to, to add their own strategies. They start to notice, oh, for the last three weeks, we talked about isolating a section, and that worked. So then I put it back over to them as we're creating their lesson in a particular week. And I'll say, now, what do you think you need to do when you sit down to work on whatever piece it is? And they can actually tell me to the measure. I think I need to go measure 17 to the end. And I'll say, and what do you think you, you might do when you, when you go right to that area? And they'll say, well, Maybe if I try to fix that fingering and I repeat it five times, you know, they're, they're really, they notice that these strategies work. Or with the little guys, I'll make it fun and we use dice and we roll it and that's how we make the decision of how many repetitions they're going to do um, in there. So I've sort of jumped, jumped the gun a little bit to, um, to number four and number five, student number four, students begin to apply the strategies independently and number five, students feel empowered and i think i'll stop talking for a second i think that's really really useful to see it from the student perspective took me a little while to get there but it's it's very very worthwhile once you've got yourself set up as the teacher getting yourself first of all set up as a student as well so that you can see the two things and and of course they're two different colors aren't they so when you're the student you're the bright blue and when you're the teacher you're you're the green um so that somehow was really important for me to recognize that took me again <laughs> some time to recognize it and i absolutely agree that they do find it very motivating to um and or oh, very empowering to use those smiley faces they they love doing that don't they and they love it yes they love it um and and i've i've had students who whose parents have come along and said i think we forgot to stop the timer sally <laughs> i think it might be on 17 hours <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I haven't had any of those yet, but oh, that's that's good. Yeah, I did so they have can one, edit. <laughs> yes, yeah, I did actually have one who who had gone hours and hours and hours with it. But um, and of course, ideally, they are actually engaged in it during that time. You know, and that's probably the role as of the parent as much as 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 anything mm -hmm. else, really. I think going on. Yes. yes so agreed. questions wise, um, Caroline has said. With the number of repetitions, do you mean every practice or in the course of a week? E.g., how many times should they play a scale or quarantine a, a, a bar or two? That would go into the checklist. Yeah. So that's where you would add in the checklist. The targets are per day. Yes. So as they go in and they start their practice, um, that's recording that they are sitting at their instrument for the day. Uh, their daily practice but the tick boxes the check boxes mm -hmm. are where you can um, you can tell I'll just get a, an example here it's well where you can indicate how many repetitions you would like to see so just yeah. let me go back and so you're going to do don't forget we can't see your screen at the moment yes. but so you're going to do it um, for example on five days and on each day you'll be required to play a scale three times basically correct here we go again so I'll go into the latest lesson. 
This is now teacher view, folks. So down here in the checkbox, I have a drop down option. So I can just make it a checklist or I can say, please repeat five times. I can specifically say, okay, you're going to do many repetitions. And once you get five uh, correct ones, then, then it counts. So that might take them 12 times, but they're looking for the five correct ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then another option um, is so that they can, you can actually put a time in. So I use this for some students who I'm not really seeing a, a huge amount of progress. You know, they're doing the practice, but they're basically coming back to the lesson at almost the same progress as what they left the lesson as. Then I'll actually go to the timing and I'll say, okay, so let's see if we can get you to do two minutes on that specific task or eight minutes or how, whatever. It's of course completely mm -hmm. specific to, um, to each yeah. person. Good. I'm sure you're going to do this, but could you talk us through from the teacher's page there, you know, setting up a new task and the different options mm, that you have when you really when good. you do set up so we can when that comes on you'll see there are different options for different types of tasks. Could you talk right. us and through that, Jody? Do you think? Absolutely. So we just made different colors for, for different possible tasks. And if you have other things that you would like to implement into your lesson, you can go to other. So um, uh, whatever it might be, if you're working on um, uh, lead sheets with a student, you might put it in there. Here's where you set the target. So if I want this, this student to attend to their lead sheets five different times this week, five days, I would put that here. Um, I, I will just say sheet number one. And then I might put in the description um, before beginning bullet point, check key signature. Look for your uh, one, four, whoops, Don't worry. <laughs> ignore my typos, <laughs> for your one, four, and five chords, are there any chords other than those? What are they? And then here we might say, left hand alone first four measures and try that three times in a row and on and on and on yeah if i want to upload to the media annotator on your laptop i'm currently on my laptop so i would have to have a previously recorded um video in my laptop to be able to upload it mm -hmm. but if you're on a tablet it goes right to your camera or your library, or you can browse in your file saved on your tablet as well. Um, so it's very, very easy. I, I usually take a video right then. So um, I'll go to uh, right, it accesses my camera. Sorry, I'm fumbling over my, my words because I'm so tired. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Um, so yeah. can we just, just going back to the task again, Yes. Um, if we can just edit it for a second. So you could Absolutely. see that at the top, we had um, a whole variety as well as the other. You have technique, you have repertoire, you have ear training, sight reading, history and listening, composition and improvisation. And you can see the colours over on the left hand side that that then tells you. Now you can reorder these now, can't you? you In the can. order that you want them to practice. So look what Jody's just done for example yeah so you put it you can put it there in the order that you'd like them to work through you might need to tell them <laughs> this is the order that you're going to do it in <laughs> yes exactly um, and but that's can really I also useful give a give a tip that i've done that i've noticed over the last while um some teachers have said well what if i don't want to do a piece for a while or if i don't want to include something i wish there was a place for me to save that task and then use it later yeah um, 
we are currently discussing adding that feature in. Super. But a workaround okay. is that let's say we're done practicing this particular one for a while. Mm. And I want to, them to put it on the back burner for a little bit. Um, and then maybe we'll revive it again later. I can go to zero and save. Yeah. And yeah. then it just saves mm -hmm. there with all of the information. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really good. Yeah. So that will and, be in my list right there. And what mm. I've started to do this week as well is to use this other box yes. to actually say hello. <laughs> Hi there. How's, you, how's, how's it all going this week? Um, yes. And almost putting that in as a task at the very top you know just a, a a quick sort of hello or if it's the first time they've used cadenza oh well done for finding <laughs> well done for finding your page or something like that so that's that's something i've just been looking at myself um yeah. we've got a few questions i think coming in and, then and I, I guess actually that the, the one thing i'm just going to say at this point is i mean i can see here um that i think it's ivan saying you know, I worry a bit that pupils might get distracted by the laptop um, and, you know, the actual, but I suppose it's actually, it's about getting familiar. So actually keep it super simple. So when they're kind of, when students are finding and getting to know it, it's a bit like anything. Again, if, if teachers this week have been using Zoom for the very first time, there's, we, we kind of, you know, it's that feeling of it's completely new and you kind of seem to spend your your time faffing around trying to find and figure out what you need to do. But I take it that when students become really quite um, a fay with this, they find it's actually, it's just a kind of a check because they're not having to think about the screen. Can I say as well that, um, again, this is where the parent can really come in and be very, very valuable. Um, I, do have a, I, I do have one student who is highly distracted by the uh, technical aspect or having technology in front of him. So they, they put it over to the side, sort of behind him and out of, out of view yes. so that okay. the piano is here, the technology is there. That's one yeah. solution. And yeah. before that, they tried to solve it by actually um, doing screenshots and printing out. That worked for a little while, but just last week, uh, when he came to his last lesson before we all went into isolation, he had been working on a piece uh, for a long time with not a huge amount of progress. Came in the door with this big grin, of course, on his face, sat down at the piano and just, you know, let it fly. And I said, what happened? Well, mom came to the piano with him every practice that week with the laptop and read off the checklist and they actually did the checklist and he looked at me and went that really worked <laughs> yeah. yes yes it did yeah. so it you know it, it works i it, it keeps them on track it fine tunes yeah. Yeah. The, the practicing and the, the parents love it you know for for students who have been kind of slightly unmotivated or whatever, suddenly it gives them a focus. And, you know, parents have said to me, it's like magic. It's wonderful. This cadenza, I just love it to bits, you know? And I think, especially in the situation where we're all finding ourselves, it is just a, a fabulous tool for getting lesson notes, for example, communicating between the two. You don't want to be writing something down and then having to copy it and then send it to the, to the parent or the, the, the pupil. You know, this gives you that immediate sense, wouldn't you say, Jody? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it saves so much time from yeah. uh, taking your time away from teaching um, and, you know, scribbling yeah. down or writing in an email and having yeah. to do that every single lesson. It's, yeah. Once you get the initial setup done, you'll find it just clicks along. Yeah. Would mm -hmm. I be able to address Alison's question? Yes, let's do that. I was just about to say, if you want to get yourself set up, we, we're getting some questions about the difference between the media annotator and the teacher attachments. Um, so in the teacher attachment, you can add... Um, you can add anything you like. You can add uh, a photo, a PDF. Um, you can add a video there. You can add audio. You can access anything that is on your device. 
or that you have saved in a cloud. You can upload as a teacher attachment. But this, did I share with you or did no, I forget not again? No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say, th there's also the ability now to, to um, in the sort of the notes bit, is to put a link, isn't it? So that you yes. can actually put in links to performances or recordings that you want your pupils to listen to. Right. Yes, I've actually been doing some group, uh, there is the group feature on it. Mm -hmm. And so I've been sending out links to professional pianists that I would like them to watch. And because we can't really go to concerts, you know, and I was finding we don't go to, to concerts. So they're not really yeah. seeing yeah. professionals um, very much. So I've been sending that as a mass uh, group share. So this is a media annotator, the media annotator in here. So the difference between the attachment is that an attachment would just be a video and the annotator, this is my student, Emma. So I'm just going to pause right there. So Emma made her own comment on her own video. Remember to shape the phrase and build the beat one in measure three, or build to beat one in measure three. Okay, how much more can you ask than for a student to identify that she has to remember to shape the phrase? Um, if you look down here, you'll see these little hash marks is where she has made a comment. So I haven't checked these yet. Let's see what she says. Remember to detach the note before the trill. Same here, detach the note before the drill. So she's making those comments. I can reply, excellent, Emma. Excellent advice to yourself. And now when she goes, she's going to see that I've made a comment when she plays it back. And the other way that it can be used is that the, the student uploads this video and I make all of the comments. Of course, this is a student who's become very independent and self-regulated and mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's just, how it works. I just think this is, this is magical, the media annotator. <laughs> I think it is so, so powerful. So I was I would, checking in my students this morning and, and one young lad had, had uploaded a Diabelli Arietta and uh, he was getting all the rhythms right all the notes right but the articulation he was detaching um, like that so at that very point I'm able to make the comment you know that's legato Ch check you play that legato you know and uh, it's just it is just so powerful I think to do that um, that media annotator where you can have real time conversations yeah. and in today's situation where we're not going to hear them live for a number of months at the very least, we need to hear them playing really um, with a good sound and, and everything that you don't get on the whole if you're streaming a lesson on online and this is the way around it I think. Can I also add that something that it uh, that has transformed in my own teaching is when I listen to their video on the media annotator, I'm not interrupting. Mm -hmm. So it allows the student to complete a thought. Um, I mean, I try not to do that in our live lessons, but it's the nature of the beast, right? We're short on time. So um, instead of me interjecting and interrupting their playing, I actually get to hear them play a full eight mm -hmm. measures without me uh, giving input. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and, interesting. and I think I one of the, the other thing yeah one of the other things is you know like comparing this to your kind of typical notebook um, and the one thing I've always had an issue with 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 a notebook is the fact that you know what's essentially a musical activity is just you know you don't actually get to hear the music so it really does become so much more powerful you know being able to work with um, with video and you know what what this facility is really really fabulous yeah yeah and i mean and you can student, also go on jody and the student hears themselves mm. it, it, it's yes. a it's a new way of listening it's a new observation it's stepping outside i used to suggest recording and they would say that they had done it but hadn't necessarily now i can see yeah. that they've done it and i can see what they're noticing about themselves yeah 
I mean, Judy, have you, have you noticed your students actually becoming, like, for example, that reflective, those reflective little comments um, that your student is putting up there? If you're kind of looking at your studio, you know, in a really broad sense, is that what you've been finding that actually their capacity to self-evaluate as learners has increased because of this resource? Absolutely. Absolutely. That has increased and their confidence has, has increased a lot. And those actually that particular student I was just showing you has overcome um, some pretty intense anxiety, performance anxiety when she was younger and is now they did her and her brother did this without my even my knowledge at first. They started their own little business. And they've been going around to retirement homes until now and playing for the seniors. I had no idea. They, they had been doing it for a couple of months and I had no idea. <laughs> and yeah, so absolutely. I've seen them take their, take ownership for their own learning yeah. and pride in their own yeah. accomplishments. Can we, can we just it's, talk? It's so Sorry, Sharon. Yeah. I'm just thinking, yeah. can we just talk about actually how we get the videos up onto the, onto the cadenza? Um, because um, there, you can do this very easily, as you said, from, from your iPad. Um, and there is the Note Maker app as well, which is really, really useful. Um, We've actually taken Note Maker down for right oh, now. You? Right, just, okay. Yes, because right, it's, forget um, that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we can move on from yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah, because of yeah. the update issue, yeah. But mm -hmm. somebody had mentioned um about the videos taking a long time to upload um and if that's happening then you might want to try compressing the videos i mean the way i do it is i make very short videos yes. so um i'm talking about me now because that was the other point i was going to make as a teacher i can teach um, so much more succinctly and effectively by making a series of short videos i made a series of videos about arpeggios what an arpeggio is how to play an arpeggio how to do the fingering for arpeggios and i made five videos and they were about between one minute and two minutes each and then those get uploaded onto the student's site so that they can watch them in their own time they teach themselves from what it is i've put up there yeah so one thing i would say is keep the videos quite short because then you don't have the same problem with uploading Otherwise, you want to compress and use something like ClipChamp is one that we use in the UK, or at least I've used, okay? So, um, and anything to add to that, Jody? No, oh, that's exactly right. I try to keep them small. And the teacher can only do one media annotator per task. Yeah. So, you can work around that by doing um, several different tasks, if you like. Just put them in as, as several different tasks down the side. There's a lot of, there are a lot of workarounds. So what I've been doing recently is I've been uploading my videos into the attachments, teacher attachments, and asking the pupils to upload anything they do into the media annotator. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I mean, I could, if I wanted them to comment on something that I was doing, obviously I could use a media a, a annotator. Great. Um, there was something else I was going to talk about as well there. Oh, people are asking about, of course, um, it being an app, but it's not in the app store. Um, so it's all on, on a browser, isn't it? It's a browser. It's a web -based app. Yes. Web-based app. Web app. So that you can access it from any device. And right now we're suggesting uh, that people use Firefox or Safari. Yeah. Chrome has always been actually our best browser, but there has been some change in the last few days. Uh, we're not sure what's happening and our tech department is just going mad at it, trying yeah, to figure yeah. out. We think Google has done some sort of an, an update or some sort of a change. So just for the next bit, okay. if you can use, uh, if you can try to use Firefox, but it if I'm using it on Chrome right now with no issues whatsoever. Yeah, yes, I, I, I am as well. But you can also, I mean, I've got it on my iPad and there is a little workaround that you can have the, it look like an app, but when I press that, it will open up in Safari for me. But, you know, you can have it on your iPad without, without a problem. And you don't really know the difference to, to be absolutely honest once you're in there, I don't think. The students um, taught me how to do that. Yeah. How to, how to make it look like an app. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is it worth just talking about the cost? Because Jean has asked about the, the cost of Cadenza. 
So you have 45 days of trialing it for free. Um, it's just like Netflix or any other uh, streaming service. You put your payment information in and then you'll have full access for free for 45 days. All of the prices on our site, you can just go to pricing and, and find it there, are all in Canadian dollars and are per month. So the more students you have, the more per student um, value it is, if that makes sense. So 10 and under students are, are 9.95 Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to, I think it's worth just having a look at that page to be honest. So and someone asked as well um, about the um, billing records and whatnot. We don't offer that functionality currently. Okay. Um, I can't work out how to. And just, I think we'll then come back and answer some questions because I'm aware that there are some here. I know Katie is saying, just to be sure, the lesson takes place via Skype or similar, not on Cadenza. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously teachers were using this before. Um, we, st we went online for piano lessons. This is, um, I mean, Jodie, am I right to kind of describe it as a kind of support for the student and connecting them with the teacher between lessons? Correct. Yeah. It's a communication. Yeah. Thing. And, and I think it's, I mean, uh, the lovely thing about that is if you actually look at the number, if, you, if you're teaching a 30 minute lesson, obviously we were previously doing that in our studios. Now we're doing it on Zoom or on Skype. Um, but a 30 minute lesson every week, you've got 10,050 minutes between mm. lessons. Mm. So of course this is a way of checking that the students know and are clear about what they're practicing and how they're practicing, so yeah. And I'd like to speak to that um, billing wise as a teacher, because I do get that question from a lot of teachers, um, but I'm spending so much time outside of lesson time. I have to say, I, I really don't spend a lot of time, but if there is time and our time is valuable. So I worked, uh, I worked it into an admin fee. So at the beginning of the year, I charged an admin fee for my extra time so that they know I'm there for them and um, that they can access me during the times that I make myself available. You have to be very careful with self-care as well and designate, you know, you can take a half an hour as block it as almost like a lesson time. And that's your time that you go and attend to notifications from students. Um, and the other, um, oh, darn, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, I had another suggestion. That happens to me all the time. Let me, no, let, me, <laughs> let, me time. Just, let me just share this then with everybody and maybe you can um, regain it. So this is the page when you put in the search for Cadenza Practice app. This is your home page or your basic page that you're going to come up with. Mm. And this is how you'll sign up. Look there. Um, and there is, yep, there's a free trial, isn't there? As you've just said, this will tell you all about the pricing here. So depending on the size of your studio, and this is in Canadian dollars, this is, um, this will tell you about the different features. And again, this is probably, this is where you would um, send your students or your parents when they needed to sign up for it. Am I right in saying that, Jodie? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the page you need to be going to. And um, okay, just thought we could do with saying that. And we've just been asked, is, is there a tutorial for the student or parent? There are some video tutorials on that same page that you just showed, Sally. They're um, slightly, um, they need to be updated a little bit, but the main, the main features mm -hmm. are all the same. I did them before our rollout in October with our new, our new features. So they're a little bit outdated, but I have not had time to put up <laughs> new videos just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there is also a Facebook group, isn't there, which, yes. is, which you're in and, and running very efficiently. And any problems that you've had, um, you will, uh, you know, can just pop them in there. And, and Jodie, when she isn't working flat out, as she is at the current moment, because I think there's been an awful lot of new signups. Am I right, Jodie? Quadrupled. Quadrupled. Yeah, yeah, which is, which is, I don't like the situation, but you know, it's, it's good that people are coming on with this because it does change the way you teach. You know, if, if you're, 
if you've been teaching in a certain way and you're used to a certain you know writing lesson notes and things it makes you the teacher think very differently about it because you have to give feedback and you have to be really really precise so it's very very interesting um, to adopt this different kind of way of teaching I believe so I just answered some questions there about how the payment mm. feature works and it does run through the teacher um, only and again uh, at the beginning of the year I I added it into an admin fee um, I would suggest that parents might be open to the fact that you're going to now have an online teaching extra fee that you would implement so that you can invest in the tools you need to give their children the best opportunity that you can give them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so just to be clear, it is only the teacher who pays, not the pupils. But of course you can, what Jody's just saying there is, the idea is you can, you can build that in. Um, into your studio fees. Yeah. I, I did regain my thought that I had earlier. Okay. If anyone would like um, advice on or are concerned about the extra time that you might be spending and using your time effectively for a half an hour lesson, I used to do with a, a student I had who's way up north in a really remote area. Uh, they didn't even have uh, internet that would work from home so we actually did phone calls I taught the student over the phone what I did was that I had them upload their when they were at school they would upload a video of all of their pieces into the media annotator the dad was the principal at the school so he was able to do that and then I would um, spend 10 minutes before the lesson started reviewing all of the uploaded pieces and then the on phone was only 20 Yes, yes. So that made up their half hour lesson. Yeah, I, I thank you for that. And that's, that's what I'm kind of going to aim for. I'm not sure I'll get there next week or even probably before Easter, but that's what I'm going to be aiming for is that the student will always upload the stuff before the lesson and that they will, um, I can then watch it. The lesson will be shorter because I don't know about anybody else, but Sharon and I have found teaching online is incredibly, incredibly intense. It really is. Um, so the lesson will be, and if it's intense for us, it's intense for the students as well. So shorter lesson time, but actually it, it, it is the same amount, but it just works in a slightly different way. So thank you for that reassurance there, Jody. Um, but that's exactly the way to do it. But I think we're all in such new times at the moment that it is going to take a while for us all to find a new a new way of being in this in this respect, I reckon. Um, so, so any other questions? I can see Jodie's been busy talking away to people. They can probably only okay, Jodie. I'm going to answer that for you because, in fact, you've answered it to all panelists. So, um, okay, let, let, yeah. There's a, there's a few questions we need to go back to. So, um, mm -hmm. is it the teacher who only pays? Yes, I think we answered that one. Um, just the teacher. And if the pupil leaves you, do, do you delete them? So, um, Jody said you can still use it with another teacher. They can still use it with another teacher. If that, but that teacher then needs to sign up. Right. And the, the people mm -hmm. could continue using, they can still log in. If, the, if they disconnect from the teacher, they can still use it, they can still log in, but they wouldn't have any new material added because the new material, uh, the new tasks can only be added from the teacher side. So that there's, and you know, that was my last point, my last um, tip was that it really, this really creates a relationship and really, really tunes into that parent teacher. Um, student triangle it just sort of makes all the parts fit together um, it helps with that relationship and builds builds that relationship totally so even if one piece goes missing it can be added back in yeah could you just talk a little bit about child protection issues and in the UK we have this well I think we all have this GDPR compliance uh, right. any thoughts about child protection and, mm -hmm. and the GDPR so through Queen, because this went through the university, we do have an ethics uh, board that we have to uh, comply with. And so all of the ethics have been complied with. And that from our end has to do with um, any email communication that we might have um, 
back and forth with individual students, which, which we don't particularly do. So if I was going to, to troubleshoot, it would be with a parent who would be contacting me, which is, again, is not all that common. It's mostly teachers. So it's really in the teacher's hands. So the ethics has been met um, from the Queen's University side, the um, compliance there. Um, the GDPR in, on our sign up, you have to click the box for, for GDPR in the sign up. Um, in the, I believe that's in the newsletter section. So if you want to be contacted by newsletter. And then as far as child protection, this is why I'm saying it needs to be, the teachers need to communicate with the parents individually. It's really mm -hmm. up to the teacher to make sure that it's the parent email and that the parent is involved. And yeah, that's. So that, that's why it's really important that you use the parent email and that you update your policy that you have regarding child protection about the use of the, the videos and that they are just going to be on the Cadenza practice app because the ethics of that is all covered with by the Cadenza and the university that's all been absolutely above board. Yeah, it okay. was it was really for surveys you know that was the original yeah. um the, the original ethics that if we were going to be contacting and asking for demographics um but we're not currently doing that anyway no, that, that's no. all been, that's no. all been covered. so yeah. is there a limit on how much you can upload within your account there is There's not a space no i was going to say i haven't found one yeah, no, there is not so far. We do have to entertain at some point the, um, our server space, uh, which we were already in discussions about of what do we do if, you know, this exact situation has happened. And so we're, we're discussing that currently. And what we'll probably do is that um, once, once users get to a year, we'll do something like a bit of a, a bit of a dump. Mm. I mean, this is a, you know, active. Yeah, Cadenza is, is an evolving platform, really, oh, yes. that it, it, it's only just become something that is chargeable. You know, it has been free to use, uh, certainly until about a year ago, just over a year ago. I would yes, say, but well, not even quite. No, no, our first no. payment structure came in May, yeah. and then um, it had yeah. to be yeah. revamped yeah. for October. Yeah. And I should also add that the process of how this is being built through Queen's University, uh, they have... Uh, labeled us as a social innovation. So the idea is that this will be, we are non-registered, not-for-profit. Yes. Yeah. So as this builds, it's not a business. There's not a personal person who owns it. Uh, once it creates enough revenue to sustain itself, then the idea is that this will actually go out into the community and help uh, the music community in some way. So Sistema, we have a Sistema program, something, mm -hmm. something like that yeah. is, is where this will go. So not only is it great for us to use in our own studios, but by using it, we're actually then helping other yeah. young musicians who can't actually possibly yeah. afford or access. So it's, it's, it's a win-win thing, I think, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> and Mary has said, is there an upper limit on video lengths? I don't think there is, but it will just take you a long time to upload it, won't it, Jodie? Yes, it will just be frustrating if, if you try to upload um, to, you know, a video that's way too long. I would go with Sally's suggestion mm. of compressing, um, for sure, and that will help mm. with your, uh, with your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then another one from Catherine is saying, um, shorter online lesson. I, I, I don't know at the moment, Catherine. I'm, I, I tried to do a shorter lesson. I started off this week by saying I think this is probably going to be a bit shorter, and then I ended up doing the same length. But I did feel it was too intense by the end of the evening. Oh, my goodness, I was wrecked. Um, so I will probably go back to this idea that I'm just going to try and keep this a shorter lesson. Um, but as I say, I, I've, I think I'm giving myself in my head. I've got probably two more weeks I'm going to continue being online. And then I'm going to stop for Easter holidays. You know, Easter holidays are still going to continue. The kids need time off. And then... That will give us all time to rethink, reassess, and then the summer term will come. We'll still all be on this same situation unless, you know, something happens, which I don't think it will. So at that point, I might then have a better sense, a better feel for what, what to do. Yeah, so. for sure. I'm just seeing a quick question here from Natasha, I think it is. 
If we're using paying from the UK, um, will it incur international card charges? I'm guessing it will. I mean, I know our membership site is um, priced in um, pounds sterling. So it means that if anyone paying Canadian dollars or US dollars or another currency, then um, that does apply. Jodie? Yes, um, I believe so. Actually, I don't have a I don't have an actual yes for you, Natasha. I apologize, uh, but I will say that your pound is worth more than our dollar. So the prices you will see, you'll actually pay yes, quite pay a bit less. less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, for the, for the uh, for the, for the service it provides, you know, it's it's really good, really cost effective. Let's put it that way. It's better better way of yeah. putting it. So we're getting lots and I do of think I'm, I'm just going to say again, yeah, I'm just going to say again about that 45 day trial. I mean, I think it's, it's a really generous, you know, it's, it's a space for teachers to get in there and, and try it out. So there is absolutely nothing to lose to give it a whirl, particularly yeah. at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm seeing also, Jodie, I'm just kind of saying that there are lots of yeah, seeing comments going, yeah, I'm going to try it. Yeah, I'm going to try yes. it. So, yeah. Your work duty is not done yet. <laughs> you are going to help. <laughs> please have patience. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please have patience as we deal with, um, you know, a huge influx of troubleshooting and um, helping people. And we're not perfect, and you know, no system is. <laughs> so we are truly trying, trying our best. Yeah. Our tech team yeah. is is so. Uh, dedicated and um, so am I and Rena and I've recruited <laughs> people to help me out and yeah my son is actually stuck in Saudi Arabia so I had him <laughs> start to help me um, welcome people into the uh, Facebook page. Um, so here's we have a good question. Oh sorry I'm just going to quickly ask so let's say people you know they they sign up they they get into their account they have very specific questions which of course we all do when we're we're learning something. Um, where is the best place to ask that? Is it inside? Is it a case of getting inside the Facebook group and asking it there? Or what's, what's the best thing, Jodie, in that case? For as far as time management for on our end, yes. If people can ask in the Facebook group, there, there are experienced users in there. So sometimes they hop right in and they can answer the question for me, uh, so which is great. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where I would suggest you go. But there, there are spots on the actual website where you can submit a question. I get a lot of questions that way. And, um, and just by email at info at cadenzapracticeapp.com. Can I just um, ask one more question, which is from Ijoma, because she did ask it earlier on, about the difference between tasks and goals. So there is a place where the goals can be set for a student or the student can set their own goal. Do you want to just outline the difference between the task and the goal? Sure. So just from a pedagogical point of view, it's, it's kind of like a hierarchy, right? So their goal is their overall goal for perhaps they're trying to sit a certain exam um, or if you have a music festival coming or you have a recital. So you have your overarching goals that they can put in the goal area. And once they're completed, they can go in and check those off as being completed. Their tasks are their weekly, uh, daily things to sit down and do and then within the task is the checklist of finite um, items that they want to do while working on that task so goal task checklist yeah. and there was somebody I think it was probably Hannah our community manager this morning when we were having a little chat who um, who was saying that um, wait a minute. We're busy typing away here um, who was saying that she was share, she had shared her screen um, with her student during the lesson, the cadenza screen, and was setting all the tasks and getting them to say the goals that they wanted. Yes. And then she was writing them in and she was doing that via a, a screen share. So that's really, yes, it was Hannah. Yeah. I thought that was a good idea. I wrote that one down. I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. Um, Cause it's, it's doing these little things and sharing these ideas like this, that we all build up our kind of our expertise and, and make it a much more rigorous, robust kind of approach. Don't we? Mm -hmm. 
Lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I just put in, I can see there that Chris was asking about um, our last webinar that we did last Thursday on how to get set up um, for online teaching. Um, Chris, I have just popped the link there, um, but it's over on our YouTube channel. So if you just um, put the Curious Piano Teachers into, into YouTube, you will find us there. We've got our own channel. This webinar replay will appear there. And of course, um, we've got lots of other replays there as well. And so do subscribe, as I said earlier, do subscribe to our YouTube channel because um, then you get to hear when we actually post any more uh, videos up there, okay? And you can also, if um, I'll make sure there's a link there, if you want to subscribe to our Curiosity Zone, I know a lot of people signed up to this who are already getting our Curiosity Zone newsletter, but if you don't get our weekly newsletter, then I will put the link in the YouTube channel for you all um, and do sign up and then we'll be in touch at least once a week with um, information about what's going on. Jody, you are a star because we only contacted you about doing this about yesterday I think so um, <laughs> we're doing all these emergency things aren't we at the moment and I know that Jody is working her absolute socks off to bring Cadenza to uh, all of you out there so thank you so much for putting this together so quickly and delivering it so uh, professionally and and you know with such real enthusiasm and it's, it's, it's great that you're using it and you can actually talk about it from that own personal perspective. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I love this community. It's a, it's a group of teachers that are constantly searching to evolve and learn and improve and do the very best for their students, which I just adore. Yeah, and we adore having you. Yeah, thank you. So I think that's probably about it from from all of us. Sharon, any final thoughts? Indeed. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm looking at um, the words of thanks that are coming through here into the chat. Um, so I'm just uh, we're so pleased that you guys are feeling supported by what we're doing. Um, and we obviously we do have an online uh, a members community. Uh, if you go over to our website, um, thecuriouspianoteachers.org, um, hit the join button, you can um, find out how to be even more closely connected with what we do. We had a fabulous um, call, nothing, nothing particularly formal. We just, um, we put out a link, um, a Zoom link this morning and we had I think about 30 of our members hopped on live. Just we went into breakout rooms, we just chatted um just for just for a coffee um and it is a time that we all do need when we are actually not going to be in contact with people physically humanly yeah. that we do need as much as ever to be connecting online so um thank you so much for being here today and do take the weekend off because i know that many of you have been working triply hard this week so take it easy um take care of yourselves and we look forward to seeing you online again really soon and jody massive thank you for being such a star thank bye you. bye okay take care guys bye